Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I have an indoor worm farm. And today what we're going to look in on is my European Nightcrawler, but what we're really going to talk about is what do I do with the worm castings. I'm going to give you my top three things that I do with my worm castings. Not only do I use them as a source of nutritional support for my plants, but I also use them for sort of a method of disease and pest control. So let's get into it. Number one, so as we are going to harvest some of the castings from my European Nightcrawler bin, we're gonna talk about the three things that I do. And so let me get you moved over there so you can see how I harvest my castings and then we'll talk about what I do with them. Nightcrawlers, I'm gonna take off my little makeshift lid here and put it to the side. You can see all the nightcrawlers are all hanging out on top here. Somebody was asking me if that was normal. And uh, because there was kind of a uh, light, tight, you know, lid on it, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty normal. The European Nightcrawlers will dig down. But you can see what nice castings they've made. But our goal here is to get this, which is the dried castings, so that we can use it in my three examples. Okay, what I'm gonna be using is my quarter inch screen here. And if you're not new here, you will have seen this before. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to sift things here until all I have left is the uncomposted uh, parts here. I'm gonna put that back over with the worms so they can finish what they're, they're you know, doing there. And once we have enough, then we are going to move on. So the first thing that we wanted to talk about that we're going to do with the castings, and this is year round, this isn't just in the winter. So, um, you know, you don't, have to re you don't have to try and remember this until spring. This is constantly what I'm doing with the worms uh, castings. Okay, so we probably have probably two or three cups of the worm castings, and these are nice and fresh, so I don't have to worry about if the biology is active. It totally is because, you know, the worms are right here. So the first thing that we are going to do with these castings is we are going to top dress my plants. This is a form of fertilizing, sort of, and because the castings have a very low NPK, you don't have to worry any time of the year, you know, you can feed them as much as you want. You will never burn the roots with these. And so what I do is I will put these inside of all of my pots. So I'll take a handful or a little scoop full and I'll put them around the side of the plant and then that will be totally enough to make sure that the plants have a little boost in nutrition as well as probably going to have some cocoons in there and then they will, you know, turn into worms and then they'll keep the soil refreshed in the long term. Uh, they keep everything nice and clean in there. Number two, is using a simple worm tea, and that's just using the castings that I just harvested, adding some dechlorinated water, and letting that sit for a while until all of the, you know, worm casting goodness leaches out. Uh, overnight would be ideal, but if you only wanna do it for a couple of hours, that will totally work. And then with the worm tea, what I do is I will drench the, the leaves and that will give them a protection against some kinds of disease as well as, you know, looking at some sort of insects. What it does is there it coats the outside of the leaf, um, not hurting it or anything, but it coats the outside of the leaf with these beneficial bacteria, which then protect it against anything else that might want to get through that leaf and eat it or suck the plant dry of nutrition. Of course, you can also use that worm tea to water the plant and that will give it a more rapid form of the nutrition and the active biology within the tea. It's also really good if your house plants are looking a little bit sickly, you can uh, go ahead and filter out the worm tea really clean and put it into a spray bottle and then use it to spray the plants. And that will absolutely, you know, give them a little bit of a boost and a lot of times they'll green right back up for you. Um, this is my green pepper and it's looking a little sickly here in the basement in the winter. I'm trying to overwinter them and let them keep their leaves. So wish me luck, hopefully this works. If you are finding this content useful, please subscribe and like for more practical research-based home worm farm content. Okay, now number three, I'm gonna 
talk you through this while I'm kind of fluffing the bin here. But number three is adding it to a potting mix. And as I'm not going to make any potting mix right now, I can't really show it to you, but I do add about 25% mixed in with my compost um, that I purchase, whether it be, you know, manure or just regular old potting soil. I usually add about 25% to that of the worm castings. And then I also add um, probably 25% perlite or vermiculite. And that is to keep everything fluffy and draining fabulously. Looks like we still have a ton of worms here, even in the middle. So, oops, and a pumpkin plant. So obviously it is good for seed starting. Um, I'm not even doing this on purpose. And here we are, we have a pumpkin growing. Too early. We'll try that again. Now I've been trying to err on the side of caution, keeping everything um, a little bit more damp than I normally would, and uh, the worms are seeming to enjoy it. Well, I did get enough to harvest for the purposes of this video, but I would not have gotten very much because it seems as though the moisture really is staying at that higher um, percentage. I don't know exactly what percentage this is, I'm guessing 60%, maybe even 80. It's a uh, mud ball, almost mud ball, not quite. So as we're talking about the potting mix, uh, some of the research that I have done indicates that if you use more than 30%, it actually can act as an inhibitor and will actually reduce your percentage of um, seed success. So I, I don't go above the 25 or 30% for that reason because that's in quite a bit of the research that i've done if you look in the amazon links below i there are links to the books that i read uh, if you do use the link i do get a small commission and that helps the channel and helps me do some experiments as well as you know a lot for the time that it takes me to do this so these guys are looking super healthy and super wiggly we have about it's about 65 or 68 degrees in the basement and these guys are very happy. European night crawlers are very tolerant of colder weather, and so that makes them an ideal worm for me to have in my basement. Now we're gonna start going over to the previous feeding zone. Okay, if you hang out to the end, I will give you a bonus tip of something that I learned just this week from a, another YouTube channel that I watch that's a, a product place that you can buy soil nutrients from. And that was very interesting considering they don't sell worm castings that they, they talk about them an awful lot. All right, still digging here, seeing if we're gonna get a worm ball. Looks like we did a good job of keeping all of the uh, worms with enough bedding. That's one of the things sometimes you struggle with is you know, how much bedding they go through because it, it's food, but depending upon the food you feed them, they might get around to the, the castings, uh, making castings out of your paper um, rather than the food, depending on if it is broke down enough for them to eat. I think I feel something squishy here. Maybe a lot of squishy. Let me see. There we go. So there you go. I think there's about eight pounds or three and a half kilograms of worms in here. And they all are, even though you can't really see them that great because they're in there with the shredded paper and cardboard. Um, there's a lot of worms there, lots of squishiness. I don't know, it, they're really a good uh, multi-purpose worm here. You can use them not only for composting, but you can also use them for fishing if you could bear to part with them. Um, good utilitarian worm. There, another worm ball. Good worms. Looks like they've eaten that mango. But I do want to give them a little bit more food, but I am running out of room here. This is not as big as blue. This is half as big as blue. So it's what, 27 and a half gallons rather than 55. So we still have um, the last year's pumpkin stem and it is just now, the stem part is just now starting to break down. So make sure you keep your expectations low of how fast those things will go. The pumpkin is one of their favorite foods. Pumpkin stem, not so much. 
Okay, so good. Looks like we've got lots of happy worms here. The moisture is good, which I'm grateful for. Um, some years I really do have a problem with the moisture. Okay, so I'm going to give them a little bit of bedding and then we'll get them a little bit of food. All right, they're going to get some fresh peppers and onions. Uh, over toasted hamburger bun. And some more uh, bananas, onions, looks like some bread and some avocado shells. Let's get them a little bit more bedding to cover that up. And then I'm just going to put the the old stuff back in here. Oops, we have it had an escape. Get back in there. Make sure that's buried so it doesn't uh, encourage any sort of bugs. Now the bonus tip that I was talking to you about was that uh, this Build-A-Soil company actually uses their worm castings to top up pots. So rather than just use regular soil, what they'll do is they use the moisture retention properties of the worm castings to prevent them from overwatering their plants. And if you're familiar with that channel, you know what their plants are. Uh, not peppers. I guess it could be. Anyway, it's a lot of good content over there uh, for whatever you're growing. But anyway, so they top off their plants so that they don't overwater or underwater because castings retain moisture quite a bit better than just regular soil. And so basically what you do is, I don't have an example of it, I don't think. I'll see if I can find one. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to top up the pot, you know, with about two inches of the soil with the castings and then water it in. And in theory, that should keep the moisture in the pot more even than if it was just soil. If you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.